So anyone that knows me knows that I love true crime. It's probably my favorite genre of books to read. I've read a lot of true crime books. I also love to watch a lot of uh, like American Justice type shows or movies involving crimes even if it's a fiction but true crime is definitely my favorite type of story that is just so interesting to me. So today I thought I would write, uh, tell you guys my top favorite true crime books. I have seven of them that are just my favorites that I read over and over and over and over again. Some I've read probably like five or six times just because they're so good and so interesting and the story is just really, really gripping. So I'm going to go from least to most disturbing because I know that true crime isn't everyone's cup of tea, especially when it has to deal with murders or um, just really disturbing things of that nature. But I have a couple on this list that are true crime stories, but not as intense and don't deal with, um, well, one of them doesn't deal with murder, the rest do, but just aren't as gruesome um, and detailed about murder or mutilation or any of those disgusting things but some on the list are so if you're really into true crime and you can stomach the gory details I have a couple that you might enjoy also so the first one on my list is The Bling Ring uh, which was a feature film uh, that Sofia Coppola directed um, but it's also a Lifetime movie uh, a lot of these are also Lifetime movies this is the Bling Ring, it's by Nancy Jo Sales, how a gang of fame-obsessed teens ripped off Hollywood and shocked the world. Um, it's basically about how this group of teenagers, um, through like googling when certain celebrities were going to be out of town or uh, where they lived, were able to actually break into a whole string of celebrities' houses. Paris Hilton, Lindsay Lohan, um, Megan Fox, Adrena Patridge, Orlando Bloom, uh, Rachel Bilson, a whole bunch of celebrities, this group of friends, and just basically stole their stuff because they wanted to live this celebrity lifestyle. And the book really gets into these like kind of themes of the modern era living with things like social media and how uh, that type of connection that we have now in the internet um, kind of breaks that invisible wall of fame that celebrities had um, in generations before. So now we feel like we know them. Or, um, for example, in the case of Paris Hilton, they didn't respect her. They felt like she was famous for nothing, and they were totally fine with ripping off um, some of her belongings. So it's just really interesting story and just that they were able to get away with it for so long. Um, it's really good. So I recommend that one if you're a little bit newer to true crime or don't really like a lot of like gory details. It's still very interesting and still has that kind of like pathological undertone to it but it's not so disturbing and gruesome. So the next book on my list is Clubland, The Fabulous Rise and Murderous Fall of Club Culture. This one's by Frank Owen. I have it on my Kindle. I have all these books on my Kindle except one. Um, this one, if you've ever seen the movie Party Monster, this is the true story behind Party Monster. Party Monster is a true story. It's also a book which I recommend reading by James St. James who lived during that time and um, was witness to kind of all these like insane happenings inside these clubs in New York um, and the drug culture and just how that kind of started to turn ugly in the mid 90s. Um, there's also a documentary that was on Netflix, I'm not sure if it is anymore, called The Limelight which is about Peter Gation, the club owner who um, basically got, when he didn't have to go to prison but he got deported for, tax, he's Canadian, for like these tax evasion um, and basically like Basically, the, LA, the NYPD said that he was escorting, like, a drug ring inside of his clubs, like, facilitating these drug dealers who would bring tons of money into the club and just kind of looking the other way. 
Um, but there is a murder that happens um, with Michael Alec, who was a club promoter for Peter Gation at this time, um, and in this like drug-addled state, ends up hacking off, um, uh, hacking this drug dealer to bits, and it's just really interesting. Um, it also gets into kind of like the mafia dealings with the clubs, especially not only in New York, but also in Miami. So it's really interesting. Uh, there is a murder in it, but there's also a lot more meat to the story of just these dark undertones of the club world in the early 90s. Nothing really like that happens anymore. Um, but back then, it's kind of all started with Studio 54 and the disco era, and then it just gradually um, became kind of darker and darker and more... Uh, drugs started getting introduced to the scene and just really interesting. I really recommend that book. I love it. So the third book I've got for you guys is Picture Perfect, the Jodi Arias story. A beautiful photographer, her Mormon lover, and a brutal murder. This one's by Shanna Hogan. Um, I don't know. I hope all of you followed this uh, story. It was just... Um, I think it like gripped the nation. It's a really interesting story. It's also a Lifetime movie that's on Netflix, so if you want to watch it and kind of get a sense of what the story is about, if you've never heard of it before, I would suggest starting there. Um, the book just kind of gets into more of the details and uh, does a good job depicting both sides of the relationship. I think the media really was biased towards Travis's side because he seemed very innocent. He was this like Mormon, very pious, very active in his church. Um, and it kind of made it seem like he got like corrupted and um, almost like tempted and seduced by this like temptress. But it, this book really kind of shows the both sides of the story um, and how Travis was kind of leading Jodi on and keeping her this secret and she was just the wrong girl to do that to because she was completely mentally unstable and ended up stabbing him a bunch of times. And just the premeditation of her actual crime is really, really interesting. I won't give too much away. Um, but just things like she does, like she shows up at his funeral and pretends to grieve along with his family. Just like really, really messed up stuff. Uh, that This is going more into like the more disturbing stories so I definitely recommend that one um the next one is people who eat darkness uh the true story of a young woman who vanished from the streets of Tokyo and the evil that swallowed her up this one's by Richard Lloyd Perry um this book is about a British uh stewardess she well she was a flight attendant and she decided to move with her friend to Tokyo and start taking part in um, hostessing which basically means um, a, in a club they pay Western women to basically just hang out with these Japanese businessmen and be seen um, and the Japanese businessmen are seen with these Western women and it kind of um, makes them look really cool basically so she was doing that with her friend. She heard she could make a lot of money. She had like a significant debt that she wanted to pay off and she just met the wrong guy one night. And it's just really interesting. There's a lot of really interesting cultural facets to this story. Um, I've read this book probably like five or six times. It's so good. Uh, one of my favorite uh, true crime stories, just uh, the way that the Japanese justice system works is really different than the way ours does. And um, it's just interesting because Japan is like one of the safest countries in the whole world. So it's just uh, interesting how it all went down and how they found her body. And the person that did it is like a true psychopathic killer. Like it's it's really good book. Um, but definitely on the more disturbing side of things because her murder is pretty brutal. Um, the next one that I have is Until the Twelfth of Never. This one's by Bella Stumbo. This one is probably one of my favorite true crime books that I've also read a good number of times. This one is the Betty Broderick story, um, if anyone is familiar. It's a local San Diego uh, tale of wealth, divorce, infidelity, and murder. 
Um, there's also a Lifetime movie from the early 90s starring Meredith Baxter as uh, Betty Broderick, so if you like Lifetime movies, I would suggest you watch that one. It's a classic. Um, basically, her husband cheats on her with his much younger secretary. They've been married for 16 years. She has four children with him. She supported him. He uh, went to medical school and then lost uh, school to become a medical malpractice attorney. And she basically um, supported him the whole way through. And then once they started to rake in some real wealth, he was like, I'm done with you. I want to get a younger version. And just... It's a really just messed up tale of, uh, I don't know, just everything gone wrong and two people who don't, com aren't compatible in any way, uh, but basically she just becomes unhinged and then their divorce drags on for like something like seven years and then she finally uh, breaks into their house one night and shoots uh, her ex-husband and his new wife dead in their sleep. This one is on the disturbing side because she does kind of do some questionable things um, as far as her children are concerned. That's to me, was like kind of the weird part. Um, I feel like her ex-husband was not a good person and didn't deserve to die, but you can kind of see in certain situations where um, you can like see why someone would be pushed to the brink of reacting to a situation like that. So... Definitely uh, one of my favorites, but still kind of disturbing, especially for anyone who's like ever been through a divorce or a children of divorce. I'm, I don't have experience with that, uh, but I think it can resonate for some people uh, who have experienced that in their lives. So the next one that I don't have it on my Kindle actually, um, but it's called Murder of Innocence, The Tragic Life and Final Rampage of Lori Dan, The Schoolhouse Killer. This one's by Joel Kaplan. This one is pretty disturbing on the disturbing scale. I would say it's probably an eight or a nine. It is about a woman who basically slowly mentally deteriorates and ends up um, just, becoming really obsessed with like really disturbing things like she starts being obsessed with like raw meat and keeping it in her like she'll stuff it into the corners of her couch and uh she um steals like some arsenic from her school's uh laboratory and tries to poison like some little kids that she babysits for and then finally does go and shoot up a school before committing suicide herself. This happened in Madison, Illinois in the late 80s. Um, it's just a really messed up story, but if you're into that kind of pathological, um, abnormal psychology stuff, you would really like this book. Um, just because it gets so in-depth into these kind of like weird obsessive behaviors and just a lot of warning signs that I feel a lot of people missed around her. Her parents kind of just were like, whatever, whatever, just, you know, it's just Lori, that's just how she is, and kind of covered it up and made excuses. Instead of taking it more seriously, it probably could have been prevented, but it's definitely a great book if that's or something you're interested in. And then the last one, the most disturbing of all, is this book, Little Lost Angel by Michael Quinlan. This one is about the murder of Shanda Scherer um, that happened in the late or early 90s. Um, she was a 12 year old girl that kind of got involved in the wrong crowd at her middle school and ended up being um, tortured by another group of girls that basically kidnapped her and tortured her over the course of an evening um, and killed her and burned her body in an abandoned, um, or not abandoned, but in a soybean field. They just left her and then her body was found the next morning and they were able to arrest the four girls. It's just really disturbing since it involves all children. Like, nobody that did it is over the age of 17. She was 12, but, um, and two of the girls that were in her grade, but a bit older because they had been held back, got some other high school friends to participate in this torture and murder of, uh, the young girl, um, basically over a love triangle situation and some jealousy. 
but it's just a really, really interesting book. Um, the whole, like, the details of it, uh, just how it all unfolds and the the reasoning behind these girls doing this kind of thing is just so messed up and you wonder, like, what were they really thinking? You know, they're so young. Um, but it's definitely the most disturbing book on my list just because it involves children torturing and murdering children and you want to think that uh, children are innocent, but some really aren't. So... That would be my top seven books, um, true crime books that I love. I've read a lot. There's a couple more that are good, like Helter Skelter is a classic. Um